Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to talk you through how to effectively warm up. Really important that you understand that warm up is warm up. It's not swing mechanics time. You might be thinking a little bit about swing mechanics, but I really believe that before you go out and play, if you get the chance to have a warm up, that it really needs to be warming the engine. Starting the car up, letting it tick over on a cold winter's morning, getting the oil to go around the engine so that you can feel like when you do actually come to give it some beans, the engine isn't gonna uh, destroy itself. So in the same way with this warm up, I want you to just warm up the engine, understand that we're not looking too much into the technical side of things. And I believe that this is something that guys and girls don't do enough of when they're uh, on the range or about to go out on the golf course. I'm gonna start off with my lob wedge. I've got my usual data up here, attack angle, club path, face angle, face to path and carry. I've put that up there just to give you an insight into what's going on with potentially my golf swing. Uh, I would be taking note of ball flight when I'm hitting, concentrating on strike, understanding what, what is what's, yeah, where I'm tending to lean towards as I'm, as I'm going through the bag. I'm gonna do the full warm up here and it's not gonna be probably as, as long as you think it might be, but hopefully you'll appreciate there's some good structure to this that gives you the best opportunity to hit the first tee running. As I say, got myself a lob wedge. I've done my stretching and if you wanna check out one of the videos that uh, is over on the Precision Golf website, uh, please do that. You'll, you'll find some really good inter interesting stuff there from our, our strength and conditioning coach. Off we go then, lob wedge, and what you might not appreciate is that my first shots that I'm hitting here are literally chips. I certainly wouldn't be <clears throat> out there making full swings. I'm just hitting these at 38 yards. That first one was at 31 yards. This purely is about loosening up and warming up. And I personally tend to hang out with these wedge shots to the point where it feels like I'm comfortable to make a full swing. But I, I kind of let that come to me rather than me going to it. I'm really uh, increasing the speed of these shots because I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit more oily. At that point, then it makes me feel like if I were to make a fuller swing, um, I could do it with some reliability and some type of control. I've now hit seven shots here and I'm still not up to full speed or full swing. I've reached a point now at 60 odd yards that is, you know, sort of a half three quarter shot that's got some decent energy in it. And I just tend to hang out here when I'm warming up because A, I enjoy it. I think it's really nice to feel like you've got your wedge game on point before you go out and play. And I think it's really engaging as well. It's nice to feel like when you step on that first tee, if you do belt one down the middle, and you've got yourself a nice short shot in, that it feels like you've given yourself a decent amount of time to hit this. I'm not really hitting till I'm happy, but I'm hitting, hitting to the point where almost I'm like, sort of fed up with that now, made some good contacts, got some good uh, flexibility under my, under my belt. Now I'm starting to just go a touch longer in my swing. So you could see there that suddenly jumped up to 84. Now I'm feeling like I'm starting to put a little bit more energy in. But this is all because I've spent a decent amount of time down at those shorter three quarter shots. Once I'm done there, I go from lob wedge <clears throat> to my wedge. And the, the, the warm up now takes a different shape. I feel like I've allowed those, well, I've hit 15 shots at low energy to loosen my body. 
I've got to a point where, because I'm a bit more bent over to it, because it's a shorter shaft, there's a bit more load on my body when I'm making uh, back swings because of the posture. So it feels like I've worked myself quite hard there. I feel quite loose now. Got my pitching wedge. I'm just gonna hit two shots with this. Whether they're good or bad, irrelevant. I'm just gonna hit two shots because what I don't want to do is give myself the opportunity to hang out with one club and try to fix the one club. So again, I, I didn't necessarily feel super coordinated on that shot. Felt a bit better there. Club's done. <clears throat> now I go to my eight iron. So I've jumped from my wedge to my eight iron. Again, I am just going to hit two shots with this. And that's about the number I would hit my 18 eight iron, perhaps a touch further. 165 normally an eight iron for me. So there are two eight irons. Now I'm going to go to my six iron. As I say, I'm really not hanging around. And when I was on the bag and coaching Nick Doherty, this was certainly something that we worked really hard on in not allowing him to suck himself back in to working on technique, really trying to distract himself from that. It's so easy to hit a shot and not quite like it and sort of hit until you're happy. So onto the six iron now. This is normally a, a 185-ish shot for me. So, Oh, a bit further than that. 194, okay. Yeah, it is a six iron. <laughs> so, let's go one more of those. Not quite struck that one. That was a bit out the toe, but she was still straight. <laughs> so, I've now gone to my four iron. I am a glove wearer, but I haven't got one in my bag. <laughs> I need a freshie. So uh, any sponsors out there, feel free to throw them in my way. Uh, so I've got my four iron out now. As I say, you can see I'm not really hanging around here. This literally is turning over the cogs. I am paying attention to ball flight, but I'm not really doing anything about it. I am applying the feels that I've worked on for a significant amount of time. So now I'm out to my four iron. This is a sort of a 210 golf club. So there you go, 211. A bit right that one, not very good. So, next four iron. Oh, that one was ripped. <clears throat> For 215. Now I'm onto my high B. This is a new club in the bag for me this year, courtesy of the boys downstairs and Titleist. I did pay for it all, by the way. No free gear for me. Now I've got my hybrid out. Two shots with this. This is about a 230 club. Probably not hit like that, but again, I think it's really important to appreciate I am not hanging around here. I'm getting in, next ball hit, next ball hit. Feeling my feels, and this is what it would look like if I was playing a tournament. I absolutely wouldn't take any more time than I'm doing so here, but it's only ever two shots, and I never go back for a third, irrespective of how well or how poorly I hit that shot. Now onto my freeward. What I probably wouldn't do is I probably wouldn't hit this off the deck if I was practicing, but that's a mat's a pretty tid tidy lie. We'll go with it. So this should be sort of a 245, 250 club. A bit low on the face, but again, it's not really, oh, that was a bit low on the face, didn't feel that. 
Um, I'm really not. Again, if that was my last one out of the two, I wouldn't grab another golf ball. I'm more about mental preparation while I'm warming up. It's a bit better, a bit left though. But again, wouldn't be going back for more. Now I'm onto my driver, and again, <laughs> if you're about to tee off and have a tricky first tee shot, I think this is the club where it's so easy to get caught up hitting more and more shots. You've really got to hold firm on this, because if, if you're at a clanger for your next one, or your last one, it could unsettle you. Now, here's the reason why you only hit two. We're trying to create some form of resilience to a bad shot, not dictating how you feel about the next one. We've effectively had five or six chances here where we've hit a club, hit our second shot, knowing that we can't hit a third, we're actually building the pressure in the practice, in the warm up. So it doesn't affect whether you're gonna hit a good one or a bad one the next time round. You just wipe it, the slate clean and go again. Isn't that the way we'd wanna be on the golf course? So why would we give ourselves a chance to find it again here? So <clears throat> off to the driver. Let's see if we can get one out there. That was a decent effort. Yeah, I'll take that one, thank you very much. Grab a tea. <clears throat> and then we'll go one more. It's not over after this, by the way, so stay tuned. We're gonna go again. Cool, that was nice as well. Love this driver. Beautiful, as fitted by Precision Golf. Now I come back to, for me personally, my 50. And I would just almost, not warm down, it sounds a bit like I'm now training myself out of it. But I now just go back to some low level shots and just hit some shots just to almost bring the, the heart rate down, just to soothe myself into into the round because I appreciate that I might be faced with a little pitch into the first and almost simulating what I did uh, on the range. So, all being well, that's given you an insight into how to warm up for your round. It's simple, I know, but understanding two shots move on, two shots move on after you've done your initial warm up. Remember, recognize I only hit like my first ones at like 25, 30 yards. Don't be going out there giving it full tilt and hold yourself there until you feel like you've got some good contacts before you move up with the length of swing and the pace of swing. And then you move on to your, the, your next clubs. Hopefully that's been insightful. If you've liked it, hit the like button, share and subscribe. That would be really appreciated. Lots coming your way and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.